if you would open your agendas to Tuesday. Um, Ashley has done a wonderful job of setting this agenda up for us and magically across this page from the Tuesday agenda are all the bios for our speakers from the American Council on Education. So um, they're right there for you to look at, but it is my pleasure today to be able to introduce them and welcome them to our conference. I, I was particularly intrigued at looking at Mary Beth Lakin's um, biography, because if you look a, a few minutes over that, you will see that she has been involved at a, at a very high level uh, for a number of years in the very areas that we have been involved in. If you look at the end of her bio, for example, she has been working in developing an interdisciplinary degree program geared to adult learners right down the alley of what we're working to do. Um, and that was offered in a blended format. She's published articles and presentations on prior learning assessment, adult learning, lifelong learning trends, and so on and so forth. So she has been deeply involved in this work and is deeply knowledgeable. In addition, you see that she has been the lead author for two reports focusing on adult learners and their place in the new economy. So we are very happy to have her today. She will be, uh, her co-presenters will be Christopher Johnson and Clay Warren. Uh, Christopher, if you will look at his bio, has an interesting history of teaching courses ranging from ethics and history to political science, government, marksmanship, and defense tactics, something we might have needed yesterday in the room. And um, he is an independent reviewer and is going to be able to pre present um, a reviewer's perspective into what goes on in the ACE transcript reading process. Uh, Clay Warren is also very deeply in, uh, knowledgeable about military military and the way that the ACE credits might be involved in that. Um, he has also coming to us from higher education and has published books and articles in the areas of interpersonal communication, psychology of communication, and particularly, I think, important for us, organizational development, as we're trying to develop our organizations to become more military friendly and adult friendly. Uh, we had a special invitation today for the uh, soldiers to scholars institutions because we thought they would be particularly interested in the presentations today. I wonder if I could have the hands of those of you who are involved in our soldiers to scholars or military outreach efforts. Okay, wonderful. So I, I know that you'll be ready to uh, give them a thumbs up and ask some of the questions you need answered as well. So Mary Beth, would you come in? We welcome you to our group. Good morning, everybody. Have you had enough caffeine to get going? Uh, if you have, raise your hand. <laughs> if you didn't raise your hand, uh, maybe you should uh, drink a little bit more. We're going to be interactive. We're, uh, we're going to do our best not to be talking heads. We're going to involve you uh, in the activities. And uh, look at the title of the presentation and make sure you're in the right place. Is this what, what you plan to come to today? OK, that, that's good. Um, this is a kind of what we'll do this morning. Since you're spending the morning with us, um, I'm going to give a, an overview of ACE and some of the initiatives and activities. Then we're going to have a conversation about the ACE review itself, which we'll talk about military reviews, but we'll also talk about corporate, what we call College Credit Recommendation Service, or ACE credit on the corporate or civilian side. And that'll be among the three of us. Then we'll do a, a, a small group activity. You will, you will have to talk to each other, and you will have to do some thinking, so it might, and you know, do some analyzing and some writing, so you may need more caffeine by then. And then we'll come back and, and talk about um, what went on in the small groups, what you came up with, uh, and um, think about that in terms of what you all have been talking about for the past, um, to, well, yesterday anyway, some of you, and, and today, just what it means for your institutions, for the consortium, for the state, you know, looking at policy implications and next steps from those different levels. Um, but before um, we get going to, into this agenda, a couple of things I wanted to do. I, 
since you're spending the morning with us, I did want my two partners here to say a little bit more about themselves if they wanted to. If there, was, if there were a couple more things that they wanted you to know about them, I'll give them the chance now. Clay? Only that I've done this for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find out what it is a little later. How about Chris? I'm the neophyte of the group. He's, he's not that new. You can tell by listening to him, he's, he's not. Now, um, because I told you you were gonna be active, we're gonna start out by being active now. So everybody's gonna have to stand. Oh gosh, I know. You want it just to be here and so, you know, soak it, take it in like a sponge, look at your Blackberry or your iPhone, you know, whenever you could. All right, now you have to find two other people all right, get with two other people. So there's three, three of you together. So you guys can come over here. <laughs> all right. All right. So are, are you still listening? Listening? All right. Are you listening? All right. So pretend that you're at a party. You're drinking your favorite beverage. One of you is starting a story. Now this is gonna be a story that all of you are gonna be involved in. And so the, the one of you that starts is gonna have the, the first line of, this, of the story. And I'll give you the line if you can't think of one. And you could say something about, uh, I decided to leave work for two days and come over to the 2012 Winter Institute. So if you start out with a sentence like that, then you turn to the person next to you and, and that person must add a sentence. So you're developing, so that person adds a sentence to that story and, go, and connects to the next person. So in other words, what, I um, decided to leave work and come to the 2012 Winter Institute and. I want to hear you guys make a great presentation. And I got to have shrimp and grits last night. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to continue this. We're going to string along a story, and you always have to use and, so we're going to do this for about three minutes. Now, you don't have to use my sentence. You can be more creative, or you can use that one if you want to. So get ready. Does everybody understand the directions? All right. Get ready, get set, go. I was, I was telling my colleagues that I actually started out in education working in early childhood with three-year-olds. So compared with that group, you did pretty well following, uh, following instructions. So uh, how many of you uh, were able to use and the whole time and didn't use any other, uh, didn't use but or instead? Raise your hand if you could use and the whole time. Was that hard to do? Uh, why, why do you think it was hard to do? Anybody have an idea? No oh, okay. It's, it's hard to, it, it's, it seemed maybe too agreeable, <laughs> too, too uh, inclusive. And I think about the way we talk with each other and a lot of times we are uh, excluding things, with the way we phrase things, and so maybe that's something to think about as we're trying to develop ideas and frame something new for, a, 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 I remember somebody yesterday saying something, I think it was Lynn, saying something about designing, the opportunity to design something new rather than re replicate what exists. Um, what, what about your listening skills during this exercise? What? Were they any good? I mean, did you, li did you listen? And did it make you think about how you tend to listen? To, okay. So this is, this is something to keep in mind as we, uh, there's actually kind of a point to this exercise maybe. So it's, uh, it's uh, something to keep in mind as we uh, go along through the morning, other than just to get, get you energized. Um, let me give you a, a little bit about ACE. Uh, we're about 100 years old, not me personally, but um, the ACE, um, the organization itself. Uh, we have, we're a member organization of presidents and chancellors of all types of institutions, two-year, four-year, public, private, uh, profit, uh, nonprofit, 
uh, belong. And um, we have about 1,800 organizations, 1,600 of those um, are institutions and about 200 are other kinds of organizations like associations. And with all the member institutions we have, um, our organization represents 80% of today's current college students. So that, that's a big representation and because we represent all types of institutions, uh, we're able to work as, sometimes as a unifying voice. It's, it, as you know in higher ed, just in one state, it's hard to get everybody together to agree. So you can imagine what it's like across the nation trying to get everybody to agree from different types of institutions about something like the credit hour definition at the federal level. But that's one of, that's one of the things that we do is really um, try to look at policy that impacts higher ed and impacts learners and particularly now impacts adult learners. Uh, and we've done a lot, as you may have noticed in the past few years, with uh, veterans' issues. So that's just a little bit um, about us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in the Center for Lifelong Learning, we have really, you know, ACE started about 100 years ago because of service members and veterans and the higher education community coming together to look at um, how do we educate people in the military, but then how do we also recognize what they know and what they can do uh, along with that education? So the, that, those are our roots. And uh, in the Center for Lifelong Learning, for years we've worked on, we've been called a lot of different names, um, good names, but um, in the Center for Lifelong Learning, we have focused on post-secondary access for adult learners based on what those adult learners bring from outside the college classroom and how that can help them access uh, more education, whether it's a certificate or an associate or a bachelor's or graduate degree. So we have um, been doing over the years what we call program evaluations. And on the military side, um, we have done that since the er early 40s. And then on what we call the civilian or corporate side, we have done that since the mid mid 70s. So our activities really include, and, and my two colleagues are gonna get into this uh, a lot more. What we do is we review, we review courses, we review examinations, we review certifications, and on the military side we review military occupations as well, the job, the job specialties. We publish the course and the recommendations. So once we go through a review, and you'll hear more about that later, we provide credit recommendations, uh, academic credit recommendations. So we actually publish those so that you, you can see the descriptions of those. Um, we also provide transcripts. Now on the military side, that's in cooperation with the service branches. And then on the civilian or corporate side, we have our own registry uh, and transcript system. So how many people knew all that? Okay, so a lot of you learned something today already, and I have not even made it to slide five. That's pretty good, okay. Um, now, the review, actually reviewing a course, reviewing a, certificate, a certification exam or um, a military occupation, the key component from, from our perspective is the faculty review team. And here are two, exam two shining examples here. Uh, and actually, and Chris, you've been a, na you're a national coordinator as well, right? Yes. Okay, so these two, these two guys are national coordinators, which means they lead the faculty review team. And the teams uh, are made, of, uh, made up of or comprised of subject matter ex experts in the field. Uh, and, they, and they all work together as a team they have to be current, you know, in their discipline, they have to be current um, teaching faculty uh, uh, to be involved. And so you can see with this little, this little diagram, and maybe you can't see so well, um, I have trifocals on and I can barely see it. So, but it gives you an idea of the breakdown that, that there are faculty members that make up these teams that are from different uh, types of institutions, from community colleges, from four-year colleges, and from universities. Uh, this is just a quick 
um, look at the military evaluation program, you know, out of our initial work, what really grew out of looking at what um, military service members and veterans know grew um, exams like, well, the GED test came out of our fir first work with, uh, with service members and veterans, as did CLEP exams. So um, just that initial work with that group really uh, benefited the re all the rest of the adult learners that we serve now. And I think I mentioned earlier that um, we, we did start out in the 40s with courses, and then the 70s we moved to occupations. And Chris is going to tell you more about the differences in this, the kind of evaluation that you do for formal training as opposed to an occupation. Uh, who's used the military guide online? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, it's the military guide online, and when you, once, you, once you get um, the PowerPoint, you'll see that there, there is a link, and you can actually uh, go to that link. Um, and, but what you'll see is you'll see uh, course exhibits uh, of everything that we've evaluated and given a, a credit recommendation for. And that dates back uh, to 1954, and there are actually 18,000 course exhibits. About 15,000 of those are courses or formal training, and then about 3,200 are occupations. And um, this is really helpful um, to not only to students who are service members or veterans, but it's also helpful to the institution itself to be, you know, if this is the first time you've looked at a particular course or you haven't worked much with service members or veterans, this, this uh, gives you a lot of information because you can actually look at a description, you can look at the outcomes, you can look at the credit recommendations, whether it's lower division, upper division, discipline, that sort of thing. And then this is an example of a military transcript. Um, this is the um, the Sailor Marine um, ACE Registry and Transcript. So the service branches actually, um, for, each, for each service branch, we work together with the transcript, to put the transcripts together. We provide the recommendations, they provide the registry. So if you're in the military or you're a veteran, then you can go to your service branch, you can actually uh, re request um, a transcript. Uh, the, for the Army, it's the arts transcript. And uh, every year, uh, AC and the service branches send out about 250,000 transcripts just from the Army. And from, smart, from the uh, Sailor Marine, uh, it is about 125,000 each year. So that's a, that's a lot of transcripts. Um, and then we also, of course, the other service branches have transcripts, but uh, and have credit recommendations, but um, the Navy, the Marines, the uh, Army, those are, those are the big, um, I think, the big um, numbers as far as the service branches with the credit recommendations and um, also with the, the use of the transcripts. And then in the 1970s, we moved to what, you know, the civilian or the corporate side, and we began to um, review and evaluate using the same teams, the same process, same sorts of teams, the same sort of process and standards, and, and looking at um, different organizations. Now, in the case of the military, they'll come, DOD would come, or Department of Defense comes to us, we have a contract with them, they determine, you know, the courses, the occupations that we're going to review and evaluate. And then on the, on the civilian or corporate side, uh, the organizations come to us and um, they, they ask us to evaluate or to review and evaluate the formal training that they provide. Uh, it could be to their employers, uh, to their employees, for example, McDonald's. Uh, who knows about Hamburger University? Okay, Hamburger University is a good example of an employer that's, they've had training in place for about 50 years and they were one of our, our first clients and they have a very rigorous um, management program. So that's an employer is, is, is one, a corporate employer is one. Uh, Starbucks, Jiffy Lube, those are two new clients of ours, but then also government um, agencies like FAA or IRS or FBI, 
the, um, those are also clients of ours as well, and we've evaluated the, um, their courses over the year. And they also some are, are beginning to use for their employees uh, different kinds of learning through uh, companies like Skillsoft. So we evaluate their courses as well. So there are a lot of employees that benefit from those credit recommendations, whether they're working for a government agency or for uh, an employer like McDonald's or Starbucks, um, Jiffy Lube. Uh, uh, Walmart was a client at one time, and we're getting ready to review some uh, more courses uh, of theirs as well. And so you can, here's just sort of a, a picture of, of, of some of our, our clients, but also professional associations like American Bankers Association, American Payroll, um, National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. Those are just a, a, a few examples. So on the civilian side, or corporate and side, uh, we do more than 60 reviews each year. And with those reviews, we use about 150 faculty evaluators, and those come from more than 100 colleges and universities. So your peers somewhere in the United States you, are being ACE um, reviewers, or being on review teams and are reviewing uh, you know, these, these courses, whether it's uh, you know, through ACE credit or through the military. Have you ever been on a review team, or do you know someone who has been on a re review team? Aha. Have you been on a review team? I thought I recognized you out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that is that is really neat. So, what what review what re, what review did you do? Uh, I've done some on the military side. I've done some also fire training center. And uh, uh, emergency management institute. Emergency management institute. Yeah. 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 So, should I ask you if it was a good experience? Great, great. <laughs> okay. Well, when we get in the conversation, then you can you can um, you can add more to it. And since I wish we had data, you know, yesterday Mary Ellen was saying, data, data, data. And, you know, that's our problem too. We have a problem about data and we're trying to do something about it. And I wish we could go back to the beginning and say, you know, since the 1970s we've done umpteen reviews, but what we can go back to now is 2001, which is sort of pitiful, but it's better than nothing, right? I think we all, all feel that way about data. We wish that we could go back and get some of the things we can't pull now. But, but since 2001, we've had a, a, a thousand reviews on, on the credit side. Uh, and you can see 11,000 different courses. And then we've had more than 63,000 transcript re requests in that time period. Um, now, you know, I showed you the military guide. We've got a national guide for, co uh, for college credit for workplace training. Uh, how many of you have used the guide or seen the guide? Okay. And do you, do you remember what you used it for or what you looked up? Or were you just sort of scanning? Was anybody looking for anything in particular? Okay. Um, well, and with both, the, with both guides, these are updated daily. So, you know, when we, uh, when we do new reviews, we add, add the courses. And then what you can see... You know, we've got a really neat and search tool that I've got a link to at the bottom that you, once you get the PowerPoint, you can play around with it so that you could actually see any organization that we've reviewed. You could do a search by organization or key name or, or subject area. And with the military, you can do a, a similar sort of search with a course and the school or the, or the occupation. Uh, right now, we have 200 current clients uh, we've had 600 over the years, and I think we probably pull, you know, the, mo the most participation from employers, whether it's on the corporate side or through government agencies, uh, as well as the professional associations like National Board. And here's just a, an example, and of course I know you can see that, right, from where you're sitting? But if you go on the guide, this, this is your motivation to go on the guide and, really, and look at this. But I pull this up, this is National Board, uh, for professional teaching standards. And um, that's actually one that's been reviewed for the graduate level and for, for nine credit hours. And that's actu actually one of the highest demand transcripts that we have uh, in, uh, in the ACE credit. 
And teachers use this uh, college credit recommendation to go um, toward graduate school or to go for job advancement or salary increase. Uh, and Mary Ellen, you could say a little bit about, uh, I'm gonna give you a plug because Valdosta has actually done work with the National Board for Professional <coughs> Teaching Standards, right? And they actually use a, a pretty demanding portfolio method in putting that uh, together. Um, again, this is back to data, data, data. You know, we know stories of, of folks that have used, um, you know, whether it's a CLEP exam or they've used a portfolio or they've used ACE credit recommendations. We know stories where it's motivated people to come back to school to stay in school and to finish, and maybe to accelerate um, their progress as well. But what's really great is that with groups like CALE, uh, Council for Adult and Experiential Learning, and College Board CLEP, there's beginning to be some research coming out that's really supporting what we're, what we're all seeing on our individual, at our individual institutions when we take into account what people bring with them and we apply it toward a, uh, toward a degree program. So, you know, I'm not going to read the, these out to you, but I think it's something to think about in terms of um, the use of prior learning, whether it's AC credit recommendations or, or, or something else. And um, I think we're also seeing a lot more of this now because institutions, states, foundations are saying, oh, well, if we're going to reach that, the U.S. goal for college completion, we better darn well pay attention to adult learners. They're part of the population and we better figure out um, you know, what we're gonna do and how we're gonna get them um, back in. So one of the things that we say at um, ACE is that uh, the, the use of prior learning assessment or the application of what you already, already know can inspire the reluctant. So you might be reluctant to come back for a lot of reasons. You might feel like you can't do it you can't afford it, um, you don't know anybody else who did it, um, you don't think you can finish, I mean, a number of reasons. So this can be a re real motivator. Well, and also one of the things we know about adult learners is they have a lot of different sorts of experiences. So the way I've always thought we needed to look at prior learning assessment is like, it's a big golf umbrella and there are a lot of methods under it. So I, years ago, oh, it's probably yeah, something ago, 25, maybe 30 years ago, when I first started out, I started out with the portfolio method, and I really liked it, and I worked with first-generation adult learners, and nobody in their family had been to college. They didn't really have formal training to speak of. And so the portfolio was a great way for them to reflect on their learning through their experiences and then to advance in that degree program and to get comfortable with it. Well, then once I moved from that setting to Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, that was the, there were lots of different adult learner populations. And as you can imagine, there was a big military population there. The, the Navy was there. So one of the things I learned was, OK, you know, just like there are a lot of different adult learners with different kinds of experiences, there are a lot of different methods we need to think about in terms of evaluation. One size is not going to fit all. So in putting together programs, I really tried to think about, you know, what's the low-hanging fruit? You know, what can we bring in? Uh, once we've brought all that in, then what is there left to do? So there might be an adult learner who comes in with military training. What can we do with that? He or she might have tested out through CLEP. How can we add that? There might be some other learning that they've done on the job, but there's no formal documentation. Could we use a portfolio? 
So what we, what we have found, uh, and I think those of us who've worked in the field for a while, is that you, you need to try all of those methods. You need to take that um, golf umbrella approach because it's going to really make a difference in terms of the greater likelihood of the adults in your institution completing. If, you, if you've got one method and that's the only method you use, there may be a lot of different adult learners who, who are left out for, for a lot of different reasons. And so one of the things that's coming through with all the research that's being done is, I think it's really important that last line uh, with more, more flexibility translates to better academic outcomes. And that's certainly what's come out in the recent research that Kell has done about prior learning assessment. Uh, employer perspectives. Um, you know, there's some, it, I think that we, some of us have been talking a lot about um, the planets are aligning, um, things are beni beginning to converge, which means maybe we're sort of in a good place right now at the state level, at institutional levels, with adult learners, with the military, with employers, wanting to do things for adult learners, help them get back into school, um, and help, help them accelerate, help them uh, complete their degrees. So, you know, over the years there have been some interesting kinds of studies, and, and I've got a couple up there from the Department of Defense and Delta, you know, that about the usual things um, about how the use of prior learning can save, can save money, can save time for both the employer and the employee. Uh, one group that's doing some really interesting things with employers is Corporate Voices for Working Families. And if you go on their website, you will see that there are a lot of um, corporations that are members like AOL, um, Northrop Grumman, CVS, just a, a lot of different companies with employers. And what Corporate Voices is doing is really beginning to push some what they're calling cutting edge practices uh, of, of employers with, um, with their employees and with post-secondary education. And one big thing that they're pushing is the use of, of, of training toward prior learning assessment. So you might be interested in looking at some of those case studies. They have many case studies on their website and they use different companies and show how those companies are working with community colleges, how they're partnering with community colleges. And what we're finding with employers like McDonald's is, again, there's kind of a, a convergence. McDonald's is a huge company with hundreds of thousands of, of employees all over the world. And they, they have decided over the next five years that, that education is really important to them as an employer and to their employees. Some interesting thing, uh, thing about McDonald's is, that, and you may have noticed this, I think um, last year they had a campaign, Hire 50,000. Did you see that? Did anybody notice that? This was a, a nationwide campaign and they actually ended up hiring 63 or 64,000 people. Well, one of the things that's part of their strategy is, okay, we've hired them, we want to keep them, we want them to do a good job, and education is part of it. We have this training, it's excellent training, it's recognized, it has ACE credit recommendations. We have some education, educational partnerships, but we want to do more. We want to have, uh, you, you know, we want to be more intentional about how our employees go back to school and what we can do to to help. So one of the things that um, they've done is they've started working with us to reach out to community colleges because the way they're looking at it is there's a McDonald's in every neighborhood and there's a co community college in every neighborhood. What a good partnership we could have. Uh, and the ACE credit recommendation is a link to that, and to that kind of a partnership and then there are other things that can develop out of that as well. One of, one of the things McDonald's started doing is uh, surveying and doing focus groups with its employees to find out, do you even know that you have these educational benefits? And if you know about them and aren't using them, why not? And so that they could begin to um, do more outreach and to decrease the, the barriers. So there, there are lots of opportunities like that one for 
higher ed to begin, you know, more engagement with, with employers and bringing employees back. Um, and because I'm not going to go through all of these links, maybe I'll show you the, well, yeah, the one at the bottom. But th this will give you an idea of what um, institutions are doing to make use of prior learning assessment. And they're creating uh, what we call degree, degree maps, and some of you probably are already using something like that, where you're not only looking at transfer credit, but you're looking at prior learning assessment options. So Ivy Tech Community College of Indiana has what they call a crop, they have a very robust prior learning assessment program, and they use the golf umbrella approach. And, but they also have done a crosswalk of ACE credit recommendations for technical fields, whether it's um, healthcare or aviation. So they've crosswalked those uh, training credits or training re uh, credit recommendations to their associate degree programs. I'm going to show you, hopefully, Coastline Community College. Now, th this is for the military, this is Army. Career and this may be entirely too slow, so if it is, we will forget it and, and go on. That swirling circle is not encouraging. So, oh, well, there we go. Ye of little faith, huh? I should have. I'm the kind of person that punches the elevator button a couple of times if it doesn't come right away. But, um, and again, you probably can't really see this too well. But this is a kind of a map so that if, if you're in the Army, and again, we're using this across, it doesn't matter whether you're in the military or not, these kinds of maps are beginning to develop uh, for all kinds of programs. But what you can see on one side, you can see requirements, and then you can also see uh, the home college wh where they could meet the, the courses. You could see the Army school, the Army occupation. You can see test here, right here is freshman composition. If the student hasn't done CLEP with essay, they could do CLEP with essay to meet the requirement. Certification, licenses, uh, and, and distance learning. So what you're looking at at a map like this, here are all the potential ways you can get credit. Uh, you know, from the home institution, from distance learning, from the military, from uh, national exams, um, and and then they're sort of they're sort of a glossary or a guide to, to go with that. So this is the kind of thing we're we're really um, this is done through service members opportunity colleges, which is a big big consortium, and uh, they work with institutions to provide uh, better services. Uh, on campus to uh, veterans and service members, but then they also, they also work with the ACE credit recommendations. Uh, at the state level, just quickly, three, three different examples. Um, NJ Place is, is something that took 20, probably 20 years to do, and that's out in New Jersey, and the community colleges, the state agencies, ACE, the community colleges, came up with an agreement with a pathway to apprentice, uh, for apprentices. This is actually a guy who graduated out of the uh, community college using ACE credit recommendations for apprenticeship program in construction and, and, uh, and then moved on to a 2 plus 2 program at Rutgers in, in labor management. Um, Minnesota colleges and universities has a, um, for veterans, they actually do a mapping of, um, <coughs> of occupation, so you could go in and put in your occupation. Let's see if I can pull this up quickly. If I can, I will. So you can get a sense of what it looks like. So you could put in your MOS, you could put in your occupation. Um, then you could, you could um, select, select a branch first if you weren't in the Army, then you select a occupation, then, the, then you select the date range that you were in. And so what it will do is it will pull up all the institutions in Minnesota that have the program that your occupation would map to. And what the, what, um, the faculty have done there 
is they've taken the ACE credit recommendations and they have examined those and they've said, okay, this would really work with this particular degree program. So what a great, what a great thing for any adult learner coming back that you could plug in what, what you've got and then it would take you to the program, to the institution uh, in your state and you know what, re what requirements are, are left to do. Um, at the national level, just really quickly, this maps to credentials is the same, the same sort of thing. Three community college, uh, Fayetteville Tech in North Carolina, Inver Hills in Minnesota, and Miami-Dade, uh, of course, in Miami, Florida. They're really working on, on, on the, again, the military occupations. What, what are their veterans coming in with us in terms of occupations? Well, healthcare, IT, criminal justice, paralegal. And so what they're doing is they're taking those occupations and they're taking the skills and the competencies in those occupations and they're mapping them to degree programs, similar to what we, to the example I showed you with Coastline. And then they're saying, okay, well, what will we, what will we do if there's a gap? You know, maybe we've got this credit recommendation or this, this skill, and it's two credit, you know, it meets two thirds of this course. Well, rather than making the student take the course, they're saying, okay, is there a way we can figure out modules so we can say, okay, you've got the two credits, but you're missing this really important thing, so do this and you've got the course. Um, virtual career network is, again, it's that, that's a, na a national um, initiative. It's funded by the Department of Labor. American Association of Community Colleges is creating this big portal. So if I, I could come on as a veteran or someone who's displaced or wants to make a career transition and I could assess the skills, see what the occupations were in, in my, uh, or see what the jobs were in my community, uh, see what prior training I had and how that might apply and then figure out a, a community college that I could go to. Uh, troops to Energy jobs, um, and this is through the Center for <coughs> Energy Workforce Development, which is a professional association for energy companies. And what they've done is started a pilot project with five uh, energy companies. Southern is one of them. And they're, they're working with different populations, but the first population they're working with is, is uh, veterans. So it's called Troops to Energy Jobs. So what they'll do is, if somebody's pretty much ready from the training and the job that they did in the military, say you were in security or you were a nuclear operator, then they can put you in a job. So it, it's ready to work. But then if you need a little bit of training, they're forming partnerships with community colleges that are ready to recognize that military credit and, and have that degree program. Or if you need a lot more training, you know, wh whether it's an engineering degree or whatever, um, they're using that same kind of let's map the occupations to the job, the military occupations to the civilian jobs and to the education. And of course, probably everybody or most everybody here know knows about learning counts, right? Okay, and did, did you know that, um, that ACE evaluated the portfolio course for learning counts? And we have actually assigned th or three credit hours for that. So you could, a, a student could get a, a transcript from ACE. We've, we've gone through the review for that course. We also transcript, um, transcribe or put on a transcript um, the portfolio courses that, that, Kel, that Kel reviewers evaluate. So that's on the transcript as well. So that's, so ju just to kind of wrap things up and move to, uh, move to the colleagues here, get into talking more. Um, we have an, what we call an ACE credit college and university network. We have more than 2,000 organizations that um, have signed on. And what they have said is that they recognize ACE credit recommendations. Well, recognize can mean a lot of things. And, and sometimes it means I recognize CLEP or I recognize military, uh, but it doesn't always mean very specific practical application. So that's one of the things that we're, with our Credits to Credentials initiative, we're really working with the networks, uh, the network institutions, to figure out specific ways to map 
ACE credit recommendations to specific degree programs, and then to highlight those success stories to other institutions so we can get more folks on board. Uh, it's the, the, the kind of thing we need to do um, for adult learners is to provide um, the paths. The, the last thing uh, on this list, well, the Resource Center, we, we help learners and we help institutions if they have some questions about prior learning assessment or about the use of ACE credit recommendations. And Mary Ellen, also, you know, back to your data, data, data. We're beginning to do surveys and focus groups because we don't know enough. We know that all these transcripts go out. We don't know what in the heck happens after that unless somebody calls or emails us and says, I tried to use my ACE transcript at blah, blah, blah. Would you help me? They don't seem to know what, what it is. So we, we are beginning to survey and do focus groups for adult learners for our organizations that have ACE credit recommendations for our institutions to see, you know, how are you, how is this going with using the prior learning assessment? Is it working? Is it not working? What can we do to help? And, um, you know, I think this, this sort of initiative will do, this is what we want this to do. We want to, I mean, I think all of us in this room would like adult learners to have much clearer paths than they do and be able to get the information a lot faster than they do uh, and be able to get, get going. So we want, we want to be able to chart this out. We want them to be able to have a plan. We want them to be able to succeed. We want it to meet all kinds of degree requirements, not, elect, not just electives, but toward, you know, cases toward the major and, and the uh, general education. Uh, and you know what, um, this is just um, an image of sort of mapping from prior learning assessment to a transcript to a, to a road map. Uh, what we're really seeing as an important part of this, I said earlier that um, a key, a, you know, the key element to this is the faculty involvement uh, in the process. And we know that um, the faculty talking with other faculty is the best way to understand what the process is and to help move, um, you know, whatever method it is we're, we're using, whether it's an, a testing out or whether it's, um, you know, formal training or whether it's portfolio. It's faculty speaking with faculty and everybody sort of, you know, discussing the process and, and figuring out what, um, what they like about it, what bothers them, you know, what, uh, what works, what doesn't work. That, that's the way, um, as far as I'm concerned, that we're going to move this, uh, move this ahead and, and do right by adult learners. So I will take a, f a few quick questions. I don't want to get into the meat and potatoes of stuff because I want these guys to um, start, uh, begin talking. But. Um, if, if we were asked, um, there, there would be um, a, a, a good possibility of it. Yeah, we, ha we have to be invited to do that, and then we go through a process, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, Chris, and, uh, Chris and Clay will, will in terms of uh, meeting criteria, uh, you know, of an organization, that sort of thing, yeah. Mary Beth, can I add? Yeah, please do. Actually, ACE is doing that in states that have invited the process within the past three years, just down to Virginia, doing the Virginia Police, State Police Force. I was with the Maryland uh, Department of Corrections yesterday. So. And I saw another, another hand. Yes. How, do you, how do you join the review team? And do you know how many of our professors are current members of your review team? Uh, in Georgia? Yes. I don't, but I'll find that out and let everybody know. I, I, wanna, I want to refer to the, the coordinators right now. I think that's a good question for them to answer in turn, because uh, Clay has been doing this for 20 years as a, 
as a national coordinator, and so he's brought a lot of uh, new reviewers onto the team. So Clay, would you would you speak to that? And then Chris, I think you can since you're newer, you can talk more about your training. Reviewers are selected both as people who volunteer and are interested in doing that. They find out in some fashion it's going on, as well as solicited by ACE and specialties that sometimes are hard to come by. If you are a nuclear submariner and so forth and know about systems, occasionally that comes in, you're in big demand these days. But there's a process that you can find on the National Guide online through ACE that goes through the steps of how reviewers are selected, what to send in, how they're evaluated. Generally then there's an educational session for new reviewers that takes place and then they go out on some novice reviews with generally try to have no more than one <coughs> novice reviewer on a team especially if it's a new organization. We actually have uh, a reviewer's handbook, which is also online and anyone can download uh, that handbook. Um, from my standpoint, I've been doing this for three years now and I came in, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I uh, had a colleague tell me about ACE, I put, did the, uh, um, the online, I can't remember what we actually call it, but it's similar to a, an application or so, I uh, submitted my Vita and within two weeks I got a phone call, could I do a review because we have what we call SIP codes, and the SIP codes really match to your background. So for me, there's a little bit of, um, there's the leadership, there's a general education uh, standpoint, uh, but also on the other side, from my military background, and because I've taught and wrote a couple classes in, uh, in um, basically pistol and uh, uh, personal defense, I was snagged like that because I found out that I was only three reviewers within AIDS that actually had that background to review those type of courses on the military or even on the civilian level. So again, with, with whatever your area of expertise is, is when you're sometimes what I like to call, you're snagged and picked for a review. Um, we try to have, as Clay said, we try to have at least one or two new reviewers on a team to, to assist because again, that just you know helps us build our numbers. Right now, I think our last database count was around close to 3,500 faculty members we had. Um, and I can't say they're all active, they've done a review in the last, you know, year or two years or so, but again, we have a large number, but again, it's based on availability and time. Um, I get requests for reviews, but because of my other job, I'm not available all the time, so it's nice to have a nice pool to dig deep from. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, do you want to add a bit about what's, what's in the, Clay, what's in the, the uh, folder here, and we can get going with that after a couple of questions, but Chris had, Chris had mentioned handbooks, so if you look back in chapter four, you're going to see uh, something that Clay's going to go over in terms of uh, review criteria, but you're also going to see, and this is what Chris was referring to, uh, you're going to see a course evaluation handbook, a credit by exam handbook, which the organizations use, but then program evaluations, procedures for evaluators, and those are all sort of handbooks or guides for the reviewers themselves. And one thing I think, and you all can add to this, um, that I think that I've seen over the years is that coordinators play a really big part in the training and sort of the reviewing of how the reviewers are doing. So they, can, they see them in operation you know, at the reviews, and so they can assess how they're doing, how they're doing with the review criteria, with the write-ups, with working with the team, because one of the things they have to do is come to 100% consensus in order to, to have a credit recommendation. Is, is there another, yeah? Uh, before we get to the review process mm -hmm. itself, uh, in January, I believe it was, uh, the uh, Department of Defense required the signing of a new memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. by all the participants in tuition assistance. Right. ACE objected mm -hmm. to that new MOU, and I'm curious to know, A, what was the objection, and B, what's being done about it? Well. This is, this, is the, this is the part of the challenge of being an organization that represents all different types of institutions. So I, I think there, there was some objection to language that some institutions felt was too restrictive and um, uh, impacted what, what they consider was uh, 
uh, institutional autonomy. So what is happening is that there's some reworking of, of the language. And um, so we're hoping that that, that, get, that gets worked out. I, again, I think, I think it is just one of those challenges of trying to bring everybody on board, uh, all, institution, all institutional types on board in terms of being part of this agreement and part of serving you know, the veterans in the, in the military. So I know there's some, there's some really hard work going on right now about um, s some revision. So, so we're hoping really, really soon that this will be resolved. That was my diplomatic answer. <laughs> If you want to ask me later, off camera. <laughs> yeah, off camera. <laughs> what, one more question before we get into, are there any more questions? Do we need to take a look, do, do people need to take a little break and stretch before we get into this? Okay, let's please. do, please do, five minutes. <laughs> 